So I first met my uh, future daughter-in-law in 2013 when my son graduated the police academy. Just looking at them, the family knew that Jen was a keeper. Great girl. Later on that year, she was diagnosed with leukemia. They ended up doing a bone marrow transplant once they found a, a match. Stuck in the hospital, uh, my son visiting every single night, uh, as much as he could between work. March 6, 2016, she acquired a uh, bacterial infection. Being in the hospital, she acquired it. Um, she's had the chemo, her immune system's again depleted. Um, I got the call from my son on March 8th. And that's what they're trying to minimize. When we come We've been teaching ICRA for almost 10 years now. Infection control risk assessment, a nationally approved uh, set of procedures that brings you to the what you have to do to do construction inside of a hospital. When you go into a healthcare facility, hospital, immediate care, uh, and you have to do rem remodeling or demolition work and change out some ceiling tiles. You have to be able to control the dust. The dust in the rooms when we do construction can uh, affect patients and patient health. It's possible that someone who's immune compromised could get very sick off of the dust that we create. Infections are huge problems in the hospital. There's over two million infections that it can occur in the hospitals. We call them hospital acquired infections. Um, and about 110,000 can die from those infections. There's materials, um, hazardous materials, there's lead being used, uh, and worse, there's the germs, the uh, bacteria, um, so mold. So we teach them, if you're working in a hospital, make sure whatever you're, you're creating, the dust, uh, the debris, you're kicking up any uh, materials, make sure it doesn't get into the rest of the building. All the supervision at Ton & Blank goes through a 24-hour ICRA class. The UBC um, Carpenters ICRA training has been uh, instrumental. Um, a lot of, all of our Ton & Blank field supervision uh, has taken that training. And even the veterans that have uh, been in the construction and hospital construction industry for years can go to that class and take something away. What we're doing here is we're training carpenters in uh, infection control risk assessment. The class covers containment of the work areas. We went into the classroom first and we do a PowerPoint. And then we bring them out here into this area which is set up just for building a soft wall. What it can be done in one work shift, we're probably gonna use a soft wall. We're going to tape everything to the floor, to the walls, to seal everything off so that we don't have any air leakage. Classic wall, once we have it up, we're gonna have our zippers ready to go into the soft wall vents that we can extend out through the soft wall to monitor the air coming out. Now we're going to put in a uh, air intake, which is a filter into the plastic so we can get some fresh air coming in to replace the air we are taking out. So this is the magna helix gauge. We're going to fasten it. We're going to hang it on this screw up here. What this gauge does is monitors the air pressure in the room. We need negative air so that when we open our zippers, all the dust in that containment unit comes rushing in to keep the dust inside our unit so that the HEPA filter can take care of it. The HEPA filter system makes sure that uh, we filter out particles down to 0.03 microns, which are smaller than a human hair. Some of those little particles are more dangerous. Correct, so that we want to make sure we get those. Any silica dust or uh, fiberglass or drywall dust and such doesn't get out into the rest of the hospital and cause problems. If it's more than one day, we're going to use a hard wall. And it's sealed just like a soft wall is. Seal around all the seams, anywhere that air can get in, we're going to seal it. Soft wall first, and then construct the hard wall, and the dust we make while we're doing the hard wall the soft wall is going to contain. It's going to be drywall. We also have manufactured walls that we can put in place with gaskets on them. The hard wall is more permanent. It's something that's going to be there for a long time. First thing that we do is hand hygiene. We do that with our patients, our family members, our staff members, and we actually tell that with our construction workers too to wash their hands. Make sure too when the workers come in that they are all up to date on their shots. That way they're not spreading infection also. We use HEPA filters, HEPA vacuums. 
We also check the temperature and humidity. Uh, we'll do air samples to make sure that the particles are at a safe level. It makes it so that I feel more comfortable being around things like this while a hospital is under construction and expanding. I know that I'm still safe being treated there. Whenever you have um, patient, public, or staff, uh, you want to make sure that the hospital environment stays as if we weren't even here at all. Hopefully all the hospitals get involved with this. It's very important what we do. If you can save one human life, that's enough. Saving lives, that's what it's all about. It makes you feel like a hero, doesn't it? Our members learn how to protect themselves and also how to protect the other people that are in the hospital whether the patients or the visitors or the ones that work there. Well, when you have someone of your family in the hospital, um, it makes you really understand what, how important that our work is here. It's, it's something that we make our members aware of. You work in a hospital, something can happen.